Hi everyone. So I've uh, finally made it home. I've been away for the last nine weeks at work over in, in Qatar. Uh, I hope you're all well. Uh, I know and, uh, a lot of you have been watching the videos and I've had a few good comments and things. So uh, thanks for that. Uh, but today uh, we're going to get back into things now that I'm home. And we're going to start off with uh, a little bit of modifications to the Edge 11. So I've got it set up here in my home office. Uh, it's on its tripod, it's on the CGX and it's pointing out the window at this uh, building you can see uh, approximately five kilometers away up in the hill and I've got it in, in focus here. Uh, today we're going to swap over uh, the mount, uh, sorry the telescope to uh, the Celestron off-axis guider and I'm also going to switch the guide camera uh, to the ASI 174 Mini. So the building, it's the uh, best focus I can get at the moment. It's over 30 degrees outside. Um, we've got a lot of heat haze uh, coming off the land in the buildings and uh, you can see it jumping around there. Uh, but I do know when I travel the focus uh, in and out, I can travel through focus. Uh, so I know I'm in the ballpark somewhere there. So I've got the camera set up at the moment in my usual Edge 11 setup. And as we know, the uh, ASI Sorry, the uh, Edge 11 requires uh, 146 millimeters of back focus. And in its current configuration here, I'm just doing a couple of quick checks. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my trusty micrometer up to 17.5 millimeters, nuclear diameter, and I can see uh, that that means that the sensor is roughly at the start of this uh, port uh, where the filter is. Uh, inside the um, the camera and uh, the screw which keeps falling out. So the sensor is there and the next measurement I'm going to take is just check what the face-to-face -face dimension is here uh, of the adapter nut to the camera face and that is roughly 112, uh, 124 uh, millimeters. So once I've got everything set up on the off-axis guider Ideally, I should be uh, setting uh, the camera distance there uh, to the 125 and if I set the micrometer to the required 146 If I can get it accurate enough Without it jumping, there we go, and lock it If I put it on the screw where we know where the sensor roughly sits we can get an idea of how far down the adapter nut uh, the a 146 measurement uh, comes up to. Okay, so let's switch across to the off access guide. Alright, so I've opened up the box, taken out the instructions, and I've got it open at uh, figure 5.1, which is for the edge 11. The off axis guider, the Celestron off axis guider, comes with a whole bunch of tubing extensions and uh, M48 and M42 uh, adapters for going onto the body of the off axis guider. And it makes an assumption that it's working with a typical 55mm distance uh, on the camera. So if we look at my existing setup, we have the 17.5mm sensor distance back from the screw back to the screw. I've got the ZWO filter drawer which is 21mm and I've got a 16.5mm uh, ZWO M42 uh, adapter, uh, sorry extension piece as well. So to make the 55mm I just need to use the 16.5 the filter drawer and then the sensor distance. So we're going to split that this here and there's also an M48 M42 ring in there which I'm going to discard. I don't need that just now. So going with the drawing uh, in the book, uh, we've got the SCT adapter which goes on to the adapter plate uh, which is part of the uh, Edge 11. And then we've got the filter body and then we've got an M48 uh, adapter piece and then I'm going to use the M48 uh, extension piece. Uh, I can't remember what distance it is. But it does say in the, uh, the manual, M48 space rings are 11.5 millimeters. So when I couple this all together, let's screw this in here. 
Now if I attach this to the telescope, that will give me the full 146 millimeters uh, distance required for the back focus of the edge. So let's pop this over onto the telescope. All right, so if I loosen off the rotation screws on the off-axis guider, and then I've got free movement of the front SCT adapter, and I can now screw this onto the telescope until it goes tight. There we go, and then I can just nip up the rotation screws. Now we can use the USB ports on the camera to work out the orientation. Uh, when the USB cameras, uh, the USB sensors are at the top, then that's where the uh, the top edge, the long edge of the sensor is. But we're up to worry about that too much just now. Okay, so that's it skewered back in, and if I just rotate this round so we can get access to that screw again, there we go. So as we said uh, at the beginning. Uh, the distance should be 125 millimeters if everything is working out as it should. So if I pop this in here, and there we go, 125 millimeters, absolutely spot on. And that means the 146 from the screw to the front of there, and that looks pretty much where it was previously. So as long as this face-to-face -face dimension matches what it was previously, then we should have everything at yeah, the same distance. So perfect. Next up, the guide camera. Alright, so having removed the camera and the off-exit guider assembly, which we know is now the correct distance for the, the primary, uh, we can look inside and I've aligned the prism, if you can see that, so that it's sitting uh, parallel to the uh, long edge of the camera sensor and using an allen key we can adjust the height of the prism uh, using this little screw here and we just want to see if I can take it out a little bit as it's encroaching very slightly uh, onto the front edge of the um, sensor. So I'll just loosen that off. Just be very careful not to put my fingers on the face of the sensor. The prism, sorry. Okay, as we're looking straight down that looks like it's missing the camera sensor now. So I just want to lock that and back in place. I can always fine tune it later on. Okay, so that's that locked, and just to make sure, yep, yeah, everything's looking pretty good there. Okay, so the off axis guide, uh, guide camera does have uh, movement, focusing movement on there. So we can use that to try and bring the camera into focus. So next up, let's get the guide camera and see what we can do with it. All right. So I probably want to put this on back onto the scope so I can actually see. I've got a bit greasy finger mark in the prism by the looks of it, and I'll clean that later. Okay, so the camera, we want to try and maintain the same 146mm distance from the sensor uh, to the camera, uh, from the camera sensor to the uh, front end of the telescope, the same place, and I know that the sensor here looks roughly to be around 7 or 8mm, so Let's just see where we are here. The 
prism, the front edge of the prism appears to sit along the edge of this face and that is, where's my screw, there we go the reference point, the front edge of that to the front edge of that face is 100 millimeters exactly. So we need a distance from the center of the prism to where the sensor is going to be to be 100 millimeters. So we're going to take a note of where the long edge again of the sensor is. Now I went for the 174 over my existing 120 because the, uh, the 174 has got a much bigger uh, sensor uh, compared to the 120 mini. So we need 140 millimeters. I just loosen off these screws. So that slides in quite a distance, and we know that that distance is going to be that's roughly 40 millimeters length of camera. So I can always work back. So let's just pop that in, and I want to get from the center of the camera to where 40 millimeters. So at the moment it's rough. So we're not far off there, so we'll give that a go. Okay, so we know the long edge of the sensor is now parallel as well to the off-axis guider body. So I can screw this back on. Let's move the camera around. I can screw this. telescope and I can square up the off-axis guide out or the camera I should say. Alright, now let's switch back to the view of the screen. Alright, so I've put the extension pieces onto the camera that come with the camera and we know that the total back focus for the telescope is 146 so from the rough front edge of the prism to where the uh, end plate measurement is is roughly 45 millimeters which means I need roughly 100 millimeters from the bottom of the uh, the middle of the prism up to where the sensor is on the camera so we're not far off for there. So I can obviously move the scope, uh, move the sensor in a uh, guide camera in and out uh, to suit. And there is obviously the movement on the helical focuser as well. So we know roughly where we're going to have to be. Uh, but if I take the helical focuser and set it roughly midway, it gives us movement either way. And then let's just switch over to the camera view. There we go. Alright, so here we can see the image from the main camera. Uh, on, I'm looking at it on the, my left of the screen. And on the black and white image is obviously the guide camera. So we can just uh, tweak that in and out until we can get it as sharp as we can. Now obviously it's during the day. It's extremely hot outside, there's a lot of atmospheric dispersion. So that's not looking too bad there, so I can lock it down. And then that leaves us the focus movement to fine tune it. Alright, and there we go. One Edge 11 converted to off-axis guide. So the proof of the pudding will obviously be when I get this lot outside hopefully soon, and uh, we'll see what difference that makes to the guiding. So in the meantime, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.